Okay, well, Lisa, great to have you on the show. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's fantastic to be here. Now, would you like to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, please? Sure. My name's Lisa Laporte, and I'm the CEO of twit.tv, and that means This Week in Tech. And we are a podcast network that has 15 shows and has a little club in it. And I took over our sales 10 years ago and really put us on the map. Now, I, I, when I read up about you, it, it, you were described as a natural-born entrepreneur, a sales master, all sorts of things. Yeah, I'm 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 unusual in that my original background started in accounting and finance. I was quickly on executive teams at a fairly young age and then I left and started my own consulting business. So I started selling myself for 10 years and then I fell in love with new media almost 15 years ago and I took over our sales process 10 years ago. So I like to dabble in everything and I have a knowledge on growing a startup as well as how to approach sales because I don't approach sales traditionally I know a lot of people are like pitch, sell, go. I'm more of a, I'm looking for a partner and I handle sales pretty much the same way I grow a business. Great stuff, great stuff. Well, I'd be keen to, you know, tap into your knowledge and experience and, and your ideas around sales. Um, but, you know, you, podcast is a big part of what you do, obviously. And I'm actually feeling a little bit nervous here as my, you know, my one little podcast here. And there you are. You've got hundreds on your show, haven't you? Oh, it feels like that, doesn't it? Well, you know, we have about 30 to 40 million downloads a year. We are one of the first podcast networks that started in 2005. I probably had to explain what a podcast was for 10 years to most people that I was talking with. With. Um, and I actually love how podcasting has blown up. It is it it is so diverse now. Like for our network, this is what we do. You know, we're we're mostly ad supported. We have a club, and you know, we sell advertising in our shows. But I know a lot of people using podcasting, such as yourself, to promote themselves. As a matter of fact, um, I'm finally starting my own podcast, which is silly. I've owned a podcast network now forever. And I'm finally going to do one around what I do. I mean, we cover technology and they're experts in that. I couldn't even pretend to be an expert in it. That's why people come to our network, but I am an expert in what I do. And I want to start getting my ideas out there and my approach out there because I'm really tired of people going, Oh, you're a salesperson, you politician, used car salesman. You know, you get that vibe from a lot of people when you say you do sales. And I'm always like surprised by that. So I really want to change that mindset of people and and also honestly ask other salespeople to stop being like that you know you don't want to be pushy you want to be the right balance of solving somebody's needs so is, is that the way that you know because this this podcast is all about helping people create more sales ideally through better presentations but that's all part of the sales mix lisa as you know so is do you think that sales people have still got a long way to go to get rid of you know, get rid of those sort of uh, perceptions? You know, I think they do. I, I, I really wish in school there would be more training for salespeople. I feel like we have training for people in accounting. We have training for people. I'm seeing more marketing training. I would like to see some ethics brought back into sales and for people to actually really embrace their process. I work with a lot of people when I get pitched. If you don't know your product cold, why are you calling me? Like, I'm going to expect you to be an expert in what you're trying to sell me or at least know enough about your product or service to actually put yourself on a map. So I, I overly prep for every call with a potential partner, which I prefer to call my clients and sponsors my partners, because I don't want a client. I want a partner that I can elevate and help them accomplish their goals and needs to grow their business while also bringing their quality services and products to my audience. So to me, I feel like I'm in a relationship business, not a sales business. And do you think there's still uh, a feeling that, you know, salespeople are out there, they're mainly thinking about themselves first, Lisa, and, the, and their, their partners, you call them second? Y yes, I think that's uh, a, an approach I see a lot where it's, you know, I get on a call with someone trying to show me something and I actually learn from watching other people pitch me. And I, I'm always in awe when like, I do this, I do that. I just had a financial pitch to me about taking over my, you know, my personal, you know, finances. And the, in the, and I booked a half an hour with this gentleman. He didn't even like pause for a question a half an hour through. I was just <laughs> totally dialed out. Like, oh my gosh, they let you get in front of people was in, and I don't want to make fun of him. Just the, the, the lack of care for who I am, what my needs are. So I never start with me when I get on a call. I mean, after we, of course, how's your day going? I mean, if, you know, I was on a call the other day and this person had a tiki bar behind her and I'm like, what's that all about? So I, I made it about them, but it, you know, you have a little fun with them, you, you loosen everything up. And then I'm really there to find out 
what they're doing, what their goals are, if they even know. Because sometimes I get on a call with CMOs and they don't even know what they want to do. So I'm always there to find out what they're about, what they want to do moving forward. And I've already spent an hour on their website and read their blog and already know all about them. So to me, when I get on a call, I want to know more about them. And then I want to explore what they're trying to resolve, what their goals are, and then also maybe find things that they don't know that their goals are. And to be honest with you, I want to tell every sales professional, if you get on with a CMO that's only been there for six to eight weeks and they have no idea what their needs are, they just know they have to go out and you know, spend their money, ask them to pull their VP of sales on a call with you. I'm telling you, sales knows exactly what they need. They know what sells. So if your marketing person doesn't, I always say pull on somebody from sales. So I'm more about, it's a discovery call to me and to see if we're a fit for them and if they're a fit for my audience. Because I have people reach out to me that I say no to because it has to fit our audience. So pay attention to your client, but also make sure you can deliver on what they need. That's really interesting that because I, I kind of use that myself because I always insist on having a, a kind of 15 minute Zoom call with people before they make a decision. And I say, well, you know, you've got to get a feel for me because I'm going to work with your people. You've got to, you've got to feel that I'm the right fit for that. It's no good just hiring me in. I don't want you to do that. I want you to have that conversation with me, get an idea what I'm like and then decide. But if, right. you, if you hire me in unseen, I could be the worst person in the world to work with your people. And you've you just hired me in on the back of some fancy marketing you've seen, you know? Oh, my gosh. Can you be on my team, please? Because that's what I try to tell. <laughs> and, and people are like, just send me your send me your deck and your rate card. And I'm like, why? You don't even know if you want to work with me. And I don't know if I want to work with you yet. So it's it's interesting. I try to get people on the phone and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, they're going to hard sell me. And I'm like, I want a conversation. I don't want to waste a lot of your time. I always come prepared. I even send out the agenda ahead of time just to have this, you know, honestly, a sniff test, like have this conversation to see if I can bring you solutions to solve your needs. To me, it's like being a travel guide. I just want to have this conversation to explore where your company's at, what you want to do, where you want to go. And then if I can do, bring it, then I come back to you and I go, here's what I think we can do. Here's case studies I'm pulling from. Here's the audience we're talking to. And I even go a step further. I talk to my editorial team. I talk the, to the hosts of my shows. Podcasting is extremely intimate. And if you don't feel that this will benefit your audience, I get hard no's from my host. Nope, I don't recommend that product. They're like fourth on the list. This is who I recommend. Wouldn't even want to do an ad read for them because I wouldn't recommend it. So it's more of an intimate process for us and who we're talking to with our audience that I need someone that's willing to have a conversation with me. We'll talk about sales later because if we fit and it makes sense and I can solve your need and I can help you grow your business, then we're going to work together for a long time. And I have partners on my network for 15 years, 10 years, five years. I don't want you here for three months. I want you here because we're going to have a beneficial relationship and we're going to get to that next level together. And is that, is it fair to say that, you know, it is still very important that, you know, people recognize people, people buy from people, Lisa, effectively? People buy from people. P someone is not going to buy for me if they don't like me or they don't want to work for me or they don't know that I'm here to solve their problems. I mean, I get client testimonials. I have a testimonial from a client that I've worked with for 10 years. He sent me a video testimonial about our services, what we do, and how we take such good care of them. I mean, he's even like, he came out, he's hugging us in this video, sent me the video to put on my website. And I'm just like, are you serious? He goes, oh my gosh, because this is what you do. And that's how we treat all of our partners. He's a direct partner, but we receive a lot of our um, partners through agencies and we super serve everybody that comes to our network, whether you're direct or whether you're through an agency. And I just think it's super important to take care of your partners. And even to the point where if you see the ROI dropping, calling them saying, hey, should we shift this up? Should you maybe stop advertising on our network for a while? Or should we go to a lower frequency or move you around to other shows? I don't just want to bring in people and, and have them spend their money on our network. I want to bring in people to make sure that they're thriving and they're happy with what we're doing with them. I mean, should we be amazed that even in today's day and age where you can find out so much about people so easily, you know, I've got all your websites and all that on my other screen, which I've been looking at for a few days before this interview, but 
you know, should we be amazed that people are still making these calls, sending out these rubbish emails, frankly, you know, and 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 with no idea, you know, I had one today, you know, I'd, you know, Trevor Lee Media, all these things, all these job vacancies that I might be interested in for my company. There's only me and my company and they wouldn't have taken long to work that out if they just spent one minute on my website. So what a yeah. waste of time. But I realized I'm just on a list, you know, and is that is, is the list is the random email really any, you know, is it going anywhere? Is it going to create sales or is it just a big turn off? I, I, I think the random email, um, you might be able to get like maybe a half a percent out of everything you send out that's random. Um, I, I think it's mostly a waste of time, at least for what I'm doing. I would rather um, have people come to me because they either heard about us or they, they're a fan of our network or they've worked with an agency or they work with a CMO. I have to tell you, I have people that I've said no to, this product won't fit our network. It won't pass our, our, our test. It's not right for our audience. I've had those people, because CMOs are like, you know, at a company for 18 months and then they leave. They, they will reach out to me on their fifth job and saying, I haven't forgotten you because of what you told me, do you think this is a really great fit? So I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, you have 50,000? Okay, sure, I'll just slap you on shows and let's see how it goes. Um, I really do that deeper dive into people and and want to know more and find that sale. So I would recommend if people are successful in sales and they're trying to find more leads, ask the people you're super serving and say, hey, since we're, we're working so well with you, you're very happy. Is there anybody you can introduce me to that you think would benefit from my services? So I'm not afraid to ask people like that. I believe doing a podcast like yours is also super smart because it gets you out there and people get to know who you are like I did, like you checked out my websites. I listened to a bunch of your shows. So now I'm, I'm comfortable and I like how your approach is. I like your information and your advice. I'd want to call you and work with you. So I think there's other ways to reach people that don't require that cold email, which I find to be a little mundane and, and so 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. So listeners, you know, we've got, you know, clearly uh, people listening to this are podcast listeners. But the next step for them is to think, well, you know, do I need a podcast? Does my company need a podcast? Will it help me create sales? So what's, you know, it should, should everybody be thinking about having a podcast, Lisa? Uh, they should either be thinking about having a podcast or be willing to do a few videos like on LinkedIn or whatever platform they're comfortable with. Um, it shouldn't overtake what they're doing in the way of sales if they have time it's really good to put a little bit of you out there so if you decide to do a podcast my recommendation is build your rundowns out have at least 10 episodes i highly recommend it be weekly as you know short format i, I like my 5 to 15 to 20 minute podcasts and as a matter of fact i'm launching mine in the next couple of weeks i'm building out the rundowns now and just make them you know important viable little nuggets of information and start putting yourself out there but if you're going to commit to a podcast commit to it do it weekly don't drop the ball i would say about 2000 podcasts start every week and only about you know two percent make it to episode 10. so if you're going to do a podcast take the time plan it out as you know you have one run run you know write out what you want to do roll in some interviews which what i plan to do after i drop about 10 podcasts and um and see if it helps you grow your business so people i talk to that actually do this Almost everyone's like, oh my gosh, I've dropped three podcasts, my pipeline's full. So it's really great to promote your business. It's really great to put your expertise out there if you just want to help people. Um, it's really great if you're knowledgeable, like we are in tech, and you're like, oh my gosh, like what phone to buy? You come to our network. So yeah, I think podcasting is an excellent medium to get your your name out there if you want to grow your pipeline. And does is there a direct correlation at all between having a podcast and creating revenue? I mean, is, is it, you know, you... One of the comments you make on your on your own site is, you know, how to sell better through podcasting. So, yes, how does that work then? Um, you, first of all, you need volume. So I have a lot of people reach out to me going, oh, I have 200 followers. Like, I want to monetize my podcast. And I'm like, reach out when you have 50,000 downloads. So, yeah, <laughs> typically in podcasting, you're considered successful at three to four thousand. That won't earn you anything. We consider our podcast successful when they hit the 25,000 download mark per episode I'm referring to. So our biggest show has over 130,000 downloads. Our biggest shows are in the 75 to 100,000 download range. And the reason why advertising works on our network, because we are 
you know, I take a look and you find that podcasting is like, you know, 20, $25 CPMs. We start at 40 and our most expensive is a hundred. And that's because you have to buy two ads on our network. We don't do a one ad model. Um, we adopted this back in 2007 when we started doing ad reads because we found the unaided recall was higher with two ads per advertiser versus one in the show. And while everybody's going to dynamic ad insertion, et cetera, I completely disagree with it. What we do is very specialized. It's host read. We're not cutting off an interstitial ad read in 30 or 60 seconds. We're not pre-recording it. If other hosts jump in on an ad read, there might be a seven minute ad read. I can't tell you every time Audible's on our network, it's like we can't get the other hosts to stop recommending books. <laughs> so we find partners that we can help elevate that our audience really wants to embrace. So I recommend if you want to monetize your podcast at some point, first you have to grow it, have a passion for it, be an expert. We pull our audience every year, what matters most, the host and the content, content's always higher. So be an expert in what you're doing and um, you have to have the likability factor, you have to have the it factor if you really wanna grow a podcast where you can monetize it. So. I always tell everyone, if you want to monetize your podcast, grow it first and be consistent. You have to release your show consistently on the same day, same time, always be consistent. So those are the first few tips and then monetization comes later. <laughs> now, I'm sure there are people listening to this podcast, Lisa, and listening to you on this podcast who are thinking, well, that's all great, Lisa, but I've been doing my own podcast and you know, I've done 20 episodes and I've, I'm miles away from 25,000 downloads, I'm sure they're thinking. So how on earth do you go from, you know, whatever, you know, a few downloads that some some listeners might have on their own podcast if they've got them to 25,000? That seems an enormous step, I imagine, for a lot of people. You know, it is, especially because how podcasting has blown up in the last five years. So we've we've been set on the map a long time ago. So we have a natural built in audience to go, hey, we're launching a new show. We have 30 to 40 million downloads a year. So the best ways that I find promoting, a, you know, our podcast is in other podcasts. Because where right. do people go to get information? If they're listening to you, they're going to listen to other podcasts. Yeah. So the best thing you can do if you don't know what you're doing yet is get yourself out there. Get on other podcasts. Get on every podcatcher you can push your content out to. We publish anywhere and everywhere we possibly can. So I think booking yourself on other podcasts, hence I'm here. <laughs> and, you know, um, and then asking people to share when you're out and, and, and reciprocate that and then invite people to be on your podcast, too, that perhaps have a have a large following and continue to network and grow your audience along those lines. And if you can afford advertising, do it. But I just find advertising in other podcasts and appearing on other episodes is probably the best way to grow your your podcast and just make sure you're an expert and you have something to say if you do podcasting for a year and you have five followers and it's not growing maybe it's not what you should be doing yeah well uh, yeah that's right and uh, you mentioned you know 10 being the magic number and i you know when i when i started someone said to me it's seven you know you've got to get past most podcasts don't get past episode seven or 10 or whatever it is but you're leveraging it for you and and bringing in really expertise to help your listeners and i think that's also also an amazing reason to do a podcast. So if you're only looking to monetize a podcast, I wouldn't go to a podcast, you know, <laughs> go to, go try to be on TV or something. Um, I, I think if you, if you really want to set yourself on the map, make sure you're looking to like add multiple shows, bring in a celebrity, bring in somebody that already has a big following, maybe in a different, for a different reason, that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really interesting because where I'm sitting, you know, as the host of this podcast, one of the great things I get from it is talking to people like you, you know, because I wouldn't get I wouldn't probably have this conversation with you if I wasn't doing a podcast. And, and you know, all the all the great people who've been on this show and I and I really value that. And I learn so much myself, frankly, you know, and uh, and I, I do a running podcast as well. And I got an email out of the blue from someone recently who said, Trevor, I'll be listening to your running podcast. And it's inspired me to set myself a massive running challenge in 2023. And I'm going to raise money and all that. And I, and I just read this email. and I thought that is worth all the time I put into this, just getting someone who's one person who's going to go out and change their running life almost on the back of it. So, so I, I, I love that. I mean, that's why they're intimate and that's why they're personal. I'm already like, you're in my list when I start my podcast. I'm, I'm booking you. <laughs> so um, just because I listened to all your podcasts and I really love your energy and your advice and, and you want to give 
information out to people that can hopefully help better them. And you've got a guy now challenging himself because of you. So I love that. I've always been, you know, I mentor a few people, you not, not, I'm not charging them. They're just young CMO women that are getting their way, their footing out in the, in this business world. And I'm, I'm, I like to see that. I like to help people get to the next level. And if podcasting can do it too, it's even better. So keep doing it. <laughs> well, I think that's great. Cause I think, you know, one of the things I find is that you, you know, you've got to keep on learning in business and I get yes. really annoyed with people who say, Oh, I don't need to do that. Or I don't need to learn this. I've, I've, I know everything, you know, particularly when I'm working with people on presentations, I find the hardest people to work with are the people who've been doing present presenting for 20 years, not doing it very well, but still think they're okay. Cause they've been doing it for 20 years, you know, <laughs> big mistake. I'm a lifelong learner. I am with you a thousand percent. I think I'm good in some things, but I know I'm not even when I'm an expert in, I'm not that much of an expert. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can always learn more. So yeah, I, I, I would have a hard time with people like that too. <laughs> so is the message Lisa that, you know, podcasting can be part of the sales mix. It can help you get your profile out there. It can help you establish, you know, some of the ideas that you've got. And it's a great way of sharing your knowledge and expertise, which in itself, you know, may well lead to people wanting to work with you. Is that, is that the kind of message? Yes. I always tell people, we actually have a sales process one sheet I send out to people because I like to just give the overview and then walk them through it. And I'm always telling people, what else are you doing? Because you need to have anywhere from seven to 15 touch points with the client to really get them to come in and see your product. Um, maybe less with like a really quick, like a toothbrush or something, you know, that's really easy to understand right away. But I always tell people, you know, they're going to see an Instagram ad, they're going to see a TV ad. And then here's the beauty of an intimate host read podcast ad that my network does. The, all these people are seeing these little ads everywhere, a 30 second commercial, a quick, you know, um, a, a, a producer read ad on NPR or something. Then they come to our network where we bring it home. We do a proper introduction. Here's what they are. Here's the feature and benefits. Here's how we use it. If we can do a personal endorsement or here's how so-and-so uses it. And we actually do this longer format ad. So if you've already had a few touch points, we're going to bring it home because you're not getting this little fluffy, Hey, we're great. Hey, that's great. You're great. But why are you great? Tell me more. So we do that deep dive that really gets it down into the nitty gritty that tells people more to the point that it helps solidifies the sale. So people should never be one dimensional. Don't just do TV. Don't just do radio. Don't just do dynamic ad insertion. Don't just do host red like ours. Mix it up. You need multiple touch points. You need that quick flash of your brand. You need a deep dive into your brand. You need the messaging on that. You know, somebody's going to see a quick commercial on a TV that subliminal messaging, you know, that catches their eye, have it come in all different ways. So honestly, if someone reached out to me and goes, I have $25,000 to spend, I'm doing nothing else, but your podcast network, I do buy, <laughs> you need to go. And honestly, I give them a roadmap. Here's where you start. Here's what I recommend. I mean, I look at their company, I go back to them, I go, here's what I recommend you should do. And they're just like, you just didn't say no, you actually helped me with what I should do next. And so yes, podcasting is definitely a medium that every brand needs to be on. And if they're not, they're missing out. Their competition will pass them because if they're smart enough to go on every medium, they're going to blow right past you. So, yeah, great. Yeah. So, and just out of interest, how do they, how do the big brand advertisers uh, get their heads around the fact that they won't be sending you a very fancy commercial because you'll just be basically reading the information out about them or your host will. So it feels, I mean, it's, it's more in disrupt more, it's less disruptive, isn't it? You know, you watch a YouTube video and suddenly it stops right in the middle of somebody saying something almost <laughs> and an ad appears <laughs> and then you go, Oh God, you know, and then it's not even like TV where at least, you know, there's going to be a commercial break on YouTube. It seems to be just bang in the middle, you know, what? No, no, no. No, uh, no preconditioning it's there it, the, uh, whoever I, put that out there did it wrong you should mark where you can put the advertisers <laughs> in there yes um no that's an excellent question because brands uh, a lot of brands work with agencies so i would say i have landed some really nice big branding plays with clients direct which is my preference because we can just super serve them when i can cut out the middleman yeah. but we work with a lot of agencies that educate brands on this is an okay medium to do to try so they help get them over the hump if they're like worried about legalese and oh my gosh what if the host says something wrong so there's things in our contracts that say like you know if you're gonna lie about covid or what's happening like if you're not going to be truthful they don't want to be on your podcast so i mean things are in our contracts that help protect the brand 
on that. And thank God agencies help develop that relationship to say, you don't want to run a commercial because these, these audiences and podcasts trust the hosts. So that's why I always, you know, when I buy for my clients, because I also buy for direct clients, I don't want producer red ads. They're not as effective as a host red ad. And I keep seeing all this information from dynamic ad insertion places that do this. Oh, we blow host reds out of the, host red ads out of the water. And I'm like, no, you don't. I work with a zillion agencies. They all shake their head and say, uh-uh, host red blows out 10 times greater. So it's getting the brands comfortable with people like my hosts and YouTube influencers pitching and promoting their products. So that generally can take like a whole agency getting people used to it. I've had to go out and do heavy presentations to get people really comfortable with doing this. They're like, oh, what if you screwed up or the, the legalese, et cetera, to the point that don't worry, you know, we have a nice editing team. We check everything, the do's and don'ts before we publish a show. So we know that we're going to rock it. So frankly, we're the gold standard in podcasting. People that come to us are so spoiled. They go somewhere else. They're like, I, I want what you do, please. Like, can you help me with all these other networks? So that's why I buy for clients because they don't want how they, they, they work with them. They want what we do, which so, so we just take really good care of our partners and, and, and it works. Great stuff. Now, how can uh, listeners uh, find about a bit about my, bit more about you lisa about twit tv is it uh, i've got twit.tv is that the website is that the best way of finding you yep that's our website Twit twit.tv means this week in tech we have 15 podcasts we do we also have a club so if you're already a geek you already listen to us and love us join the club um it's seven dollars a month you get ad free content a bunch of extras and if you're interested in advertising just reach out to me lisa at twit.tv you'll either hear directly from me or my vp of sales um and we're happy to help you and talk about out what your goals are and your needs and we can see if we can work together right so just to round things up lisa if uh, people are listening to this and they're thinking wow you know I, i've been wanting to start a podcast i've been inspired by lisa to start one a couple of top tips that you would say this is what you should now do next Honestly, turn the camera on and just try it. I mean, try it on LinkedIn, do some live things on YouTube, just practice. And you know what? You can even like set up a Zoom box and record and practice. You know, for instance, I'm going to launch my first podcast in a couple of weeks. I've never done this before. So I'm practicing on Zoom and recording myself so I can see how it looks. And, you know, I highly recommend doing that practice, you know, share it with your friends, see what they think, see if you're comfortable doing it. But the most important thing, be an expert in what you're talking about, or just consider your audience, put information out there that you feel can be helpful, educational, and something you really know about. Don't do a podcast on, oh, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm just going to do a podcast. <laughs> be an expert in what you do and be intentional. And if you're going to do a podcast, build out your rundown. So besides practicing, plan ahead. You want to be consistent with your podcast if it's something you want to do long term. Uh, Lisa, you know, you well know that people listen to podcasts over a period of time. So there's a good chance that uh, a couple of weeks after we did record this, people are listening to it for the first time. So yes. are, you, are you able to steer them in the direction of your, your new podcast at this moment in time? Or is that something we can add to the show notes later on, maybe? I'll, I'll send you a link to add to the show notes later on. I just picked the name yesterday and wrote out the first four rundown. So I'm going to try okay. to get 10. And oh. as soon as I secure the feed and get my album out up, I'll shoot it your way. <laughs> but um, I promise you'll, you'll know about it um it's just because i finally decided to do it that i want to get it done and i got to re drop episode zero so that's the other thing drop an episode zero episode zero says who you are what you're doing what the podcast is going to be about and stay tuned so then people will be excited so once i drop episode zero i'll send it your way great stuff there we go listeners i was trying to get a world exclusive i nearly did not quite <laughs> right. well i haven't established my feed and i don't want to just throw it out there because if i do someone might take it <laughs> no but lisa, once i do it'll be fun that'll be great i'll add that to the show notes lisa thank you very much for coming on the show best of luck with your own podcast and the continued growth of you know this week in tech so brilliant thank you very much thank you for having me